No, actually, I'm just getting ready to put full steam ahead on the Health to Skelter project. Right. You know. What can we look forward to that, though? Because I, I want to I wanna hear something. You know what I'm saying? You and Good Cube question. together. <laughs> you and Cube together. That's slamming. Yeah. Probably, um, probably next year sometime. Next year sometime. Next summer. What up guys, Ali here and welcome to Ali Talks Music. Add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music as well. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now let's get into the video. Around 1992, Dr. Dre released the Chronic album. One, two, three into the folk. Snoop Doggy Dog and Dr. Dre is at the dope. The album produced singles like Nothing But A G Thing, Dre Day, and Let Me Ride, and created a huge buzz for Dr. Dre, Death Row Records, and the artists on the project. Dr. Dre was starting to build a solid resume as a solo artist. In another section of the hip-hop world, there was Ice Cube, an artist that had been dropping solo studio albums for a minute. Around 1993, Ice Cube released his fourth studio album called Lethal Injection. The album was very successful, selling about 215,000 copies in the first week and debuting at number 5 on the Billboard 200. The G or not the G is the question, and like Smith told Wesson, Both artists were becoming legends right before our very eyes. Around this time period, a lot of eyes were on Dr. Dre and Ice Cube, especially considering they previously had beef. So they decided to use the momentum they had built to bring us a special, not so special hip hop moment. Around 1994, Snoop Dogg released a soundtrack album and short film called Murder Was The Case. The project contains a track called Natural Bone Killers, one that has a lot of history. This was the first track that Dr. Dre and Ice Cube had collaborated on since their famous beef which took place during the NWA days. Journey with me into the mind of a maniac, doomed to be a killer since I came out the nutsack. Dre was clearly holding no grudges, even though No Vaseline is one of the most blatantly disrespectful tracks we've ever heard. Interestingly enough, this song was supposed to appear on Helter Skelter, a collab album between Dr. Dre and Ice Cube. I know a lot of people were looking forward to this project, so why didn't it come out? Let's find out. Me and Cube got together a few days ago, and um, we're getting ready to start on our album. Um, and about you and Ice Cube? Yeah, me and Ice Cube. Well, you matter of fact, you're you gonna do something together? Yeah, matter of fact, he's, oh. he's supposed to come over here later on this evening. Okay, you, you know, got Cube and, uh, on the look. So that sounds interesting. You and Cube just going back and forth, kind of like the way you and Snoop are doing. Or yeah, I mean, what what the plan is? He's gonna do two solo cuts on the album. I'm gonna do two solo cuts on the album, and um, the rest we're gonna do together. We're gonna put like about ten, maybe eleven songs on the album, and you know, you know what's gonna happen. <laughs> and um, what would you call that? It would just be Dr. Dre and Ice Cube, or would yeah, you come Dr. with a Dre, new name? Dr. Dre and Ice Cube, Ice Cube and Dr. Dre. We'll flip a coin or something and see who name goes first. It don't matter to me. There we go. Just give me the papes. There we go. <laughs> a lot of love jumping off and more for you, Snoop. Yeah, I'm going to be a part of it, you know what I'm saying? Put my little two cent in like I did on Dre. I'm going to try to contribute to the dope and just keep it flowing on West Coast play, but you know what I'm saying? We got to yeah. represent. When Natural Born Killers came out, the lyrical content was very shocking to a lot of people. The song had a lot of content that centered on violence and murder. Despite this, Dr. Dre and Ice Cube knew that one way to grab the audience's attention was to provide them with shock value. It's true that it's a b-boy gangster record on the macabre tip. But what would be the point of Ice Cube and Dr. Dre doing a project like this if we didn't freak people out? The point of the song is to poke fun at serial killers like Oliver Stone's movie did. It's supposed to be humorous. Yeah, natural born killers. Now, what's the concept for that? How did y'all hook up with that one? Um, well, actually, I just had this track here uh -huh. and uh, called Cube. I was like, yo, got this track, come over and spit something on it, you know? And he was like, yeah. yo, bam, here. At first, he just had me doing a break. Oh, that's it? <laughs> yeah, and I, I didn't want to bring that up. <laughs> you know, he had me doing a break. And I was in there like, damn, I'm just doing a break. That's messed up, man. I got yeah. more to say. And he was going to give me a break. a lot more to say. So, you know, he called me a couple of days later and said, man, why don't you write some lyrics and do a verse to us? So I said, hey, hey. I don't mind. <laughs> As mentioned earlier, Natural Born Killers was supposed to be on the album. Another beat that was supposed to be on the album 
was Can't See Me by Tupac. Must see my enemies defeated. I catch them while they coked up and weeded open fire. Now them niggas bleeding. Now when Tupac joined Death Row Records, he took a lot of attention from the other members of the label. Nate Dogg, Sam Sneed, and the Lady of Rage, amongst others, were all sidelined when Pac joined the label because Death Row Records wanted to release a Pac album as soon as possible. When Tupac got out of prison in 1995, he was hungry and was eager to make up for lost time. One of the very first few things he did when he got out of prison was dinner at Monty Steakhouse with his new label mates. After that, Pac became focused on his next album, All Eyes On Me. California Love, a single that ended up on Pac's project, was originally a Dr. Dre single, one that was supposed to end up on Dr. Dre's The Chronic 2, A New World Odor. Some even say this song might have made it on Helter Skelter, but when Pac got out of prison, all speculation was put to rest. If you think about it, Pac's previous album, Me Against the World, had reached number one. He had already proven that he had the ability to move units, so investing in his project was probably a no-brainer for Suge Knight and Death Row Records. I guess the question is, if Pac didn't join Death Row Records and take Can't See Me, would Helter Skelter have come out? Pac might have been one reason why the project didn't come out, but there are still other things that held this project back. Around 1999, Eminem released his first official studio album under Interscope, one called the Slim Shady LP. Thanks to Eminem, hip-hop was becoming more accessible to a wider audience, helping to give the genre a boost in popularity. The problem is, Eminem's fame was so immense that he took the attention away from his label's most talented acts, something that, according to Cube, is the reason why Helter Skelter did not come out. Dre had all of Eminem's attention, and once 50 Cent got added to the mix, there was no chance that Dr. Dre was going to focus on Helter Skelter when he was making so much money with Eminem and 50 Cent. What happened to Helter Skelter was Eminem and 50 Cent. That's what happened to Helter Skelter. <laughs> they blew, when we was like thinking about doing that project, these Eminem come in, he blow yeah, right. the doors off the Interscope. Dre has to turn his focus strictly on that, which he should. You know, you can't, you know, like, some shit that's popping, you got to jump on that train. You can't be like, yo, I'll catch the next one. And let's create something that's popping. So he had to run on that train. As soon as that train started to die down, here come 50, which was a whole nother train. And then the game. So a whole bunch of good shit happened that put this project on the back, back burner. Now, I personally do not buy this excuse because if you think about it, Dr. Dre has been talking about Helter Skelter since the early 90s. Since then, he was hyping the album so much that people were looking forward to it. But alas, the years passed. If Eminem's first album came out around 1999, and Dr. Dre has been talking about Helter Skelter since the early 90s, that means Dr. Dre and Ice Cube had several years to work on this project. Now, according to Ice Cube, the project will only come out when Dr. Dre wants it to come out. If Dr. Dre was able to sit down and create about 20 beats for this project, then Ice Cube would have had no problem rapping over them. The only problem is, Dr. Dre was not really committed to the project, and since Dr. Dre left Death Row Records around 96, Aftermath Records became his primary focus. It was basically people asking me, when is this gonna pop, when is this gonna pop? It ain't gonna pop till Dre says it's gonna pop because he gotta do the music. Mm -hmm. I got rhymes, it's not like I ain't, I ain't got nothing to rap about, right. so, you know, he's like, no son no wine before it's time, hmm. you know what I mean, he on that tip, so, oh, okay. I'm with him. So, so it's better to wait for his full undivided attention than to do some shit and people be like, oh, you know, yeah, right. Right. Around 1996, the DOC released his second studio album called Helter Skelter. The album was a massive flop and only picked at number 30 on the Billboard 200. But there's a reason for this. Years prior to releasing this album, the DOC was involved in a car crash that changed his 
life. After leaving a party while drunk and high, the DOC fell asleep at the wheel of his car and ended up landing face first into a tree. The man spent numerous hours in surgery, however despite all the effort that the doctors put in, the DOC could not recover his voice and it was changed forever. It was raspier and not that many people wanted to hear him rap with this newfound voice. After realizing that his rap career was basically over, the DOC became a ghostwriter and contributed a lot of songs to NWA and Death Row Records. Now like most artists that dealt with Death Row Records, the DOC encountered his fair share of problems. Despite making contributions to a lot of classics on the label, he wasn't receiving much payment for his ghostwriting work, claiming to have received nothing at all. Naturally, this angered the MC so much so that he decided to take aim at Dr. Dre and Death Row Records. Remember the album that Dr. Dre and Ice Cube were working on, Helter Skelter? Well, the DOC decided to call his album the same thing just to spite Dr. Dre. Not only that, his lyrics and ghostwriting work that was supposed to go to Dr. Dre and Ice Cube's album went towards his. This might have been a great plan. The DOC's Helter Skelter might have been able to move some units if his voice did not change. The beats on the project are amazing. However, one listen through this makes it clear that the DOC does not have the same energy that he used to have. As mentioned earlier, the album flopped. The DOC tried to spite Dre by taking the name of Dre's project, but in the end, he was the one who took an L. The DOC puts in a lot of work at Death Row Records as far as ghostwriting goes. He wrote on Dr. Dre's The Chronic, the DOC was such a heavy influence on this album that Dr. Dre thanked the DOC for talking him into doing this album. Dre started working on an album. He wanted to work on an album with Ice Cube and it was supposed to be called Helter Skelter and he gave me all of these books to read, apocalyptic books. He wanted me to get started for him, so I did. And I wrote this one song which I really liked. And when I played it for him, he immediately wanted to take it. And those kind of things just hurt. I got tired of putting all the work in but not being able to benefit, not being able to even get the love from it from the fans. These guys never told motherfuckers how hard I was working. You never knew that I put so much work into nothing but a G thing. You just saw me in the video and assumed, I guess, well, DOC, he must have been doing something. But I was sweating on that motherfucker just as much as Snoop Dogg and Dre. In essence, there are many reasons why Helter Skelter did not come out. For starters, Pac took the attention away from Dr. Dre's projects. Dr. Dre was supposed to use California Love on The Chronic 2, but Pac took that. Dre was also trying to use Can't See Me on Helter Skelter, but Pac took that. When Pac joined Death Row Records, it's almost like he became the flagship artist of the label, a role that Dr. Dre previously occupied. Because of this, Dre eventually had to focus on Pac's projects and put his on the back burner. Now Ice Cube says that the reason why the album didn't come out is because Eminem started blowing up and Dr. Dre started paying more attention to Eminem and everything Eminem had going on. But I don't buy that because as I explained in the video, the timelines do not match. I believe the DOC played a huge role in why this album did not come out. He took the name and concept of the original Dr. Dre and Ice Cube project and made it his own just to spite Dr. Dre. He was also supposed to be a writer on the project and once he left Death Row Records, he took some of the material that was supposed to end up on the project. Yes, the DOC did play a huge role in why this album did not come out, but one cannot simply not blame Dr. Dre. Like Ice Cube said, this album will come out when Dr. Dre wants it to come out. Dr. Dre has a knack for announcing a project and never releasing it. So unfortunately for the fans, Helter Skelter Alter is one of those albums that falls into that category. That's it for me, it's your boy Ali. What happened to Helter Skelter in your opinion? Let me know it down below. Video requests, be sure to let me know it down below as well. New what happened to video dropping next week. Also add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music. Till next time, peace.